you shake my nerves and you rattle my brain Too much of love drives a man insane You broke my will, but what a thrill Goodness gracious, great balls of fire I let you love, but I thought it was funny You came along and you knew me, honey I've changed my mind, this love is fine Hello and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Suzanne Venker Show. I've been wanting to do a radio show and podcast for some time, and I'm so excited to finally be putting it to action. This program will air once a week for one hour. We will be bringing in authors, experts, psychologists, and everyday folks who are making a difference by sharing politically incorrect truths about men and women, marriage and families, sex and relationships. Those of you who are familiar with my work as an author and columnist know that my passion is helping people reject cultural trends that are harmful and counterproductive to their happiness and well-being. With that in mind, The Suzanne Venker Show has one main goal, to help you and the people you love feel secure in your beliefs about what you know is right and confident in your desire to speak your mind. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the first episode of The Suzanne Venker Show. This program is brought to you by Hair Saloon for Men. For men against the grain, visit hairsaloon.com. One of my favorite things about taking my son to Hair Saloon for Men when he was younger was that the front desk keeps extensive client notes on each customer so I didn't have to remember what they did the time before that made my son's hair look so good. No matter which stylist my son had had, he could always get the same haircut. That's one of the many benefits you'll get from being a customer at Hair Saloon for Men. So head on over to hairsaloon.com. They have 18 locations in St. Louis, Pittsburgh, Boston, and Houston. Book online or through their mobile app. Again, that's hairsaloon.com. For my inaugural program, I couldn't think of a better person to talk to than my next guest, whose voice you may recognize. Here's a clip of her on Larry King Live. I get so many calls with people saying, I'm jealous, maybe my wife, my husband is looking at somebody else. And you know what? If you were the most loving, wonderful person to them, if you were adoring and sweet and kind and thoughtful and considerate and sexy, and all of that with them, nobody could drag them away from you. We support mostly in our society, how you feel about your day and are your needs being met. If, if I could think of one reason that people give me time and time and time again on the show when I ask them why they had the affair or why they hurt their feelings, and it's because, well, I wasn't getting my needs met. It's all about what I'm not getting. And people have forgotten that getting married is a pledge to make somebody else's life worth living. If you couldn't tell, that was Dr. Laura Schlesinger, commonly known as Dr. Laura. She's the author of 13 New York Times bestsellers and is host of one of the most popular talk shows in radio history, which you can find on Sirius XM Radio Channel 111. Dr. Laura offers no-nonsense advice infused with a strong sense of ethics, accountability, and personal responsibility. In 2018, Dr. Laura was named to the National Radio Hall of Fame. So that's the professional bio. You worked out that I'm a little wacky and funny. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. You're definitely funny. You're definitely funny. Um, I... (laughs) That's sort of just the professional background I wanted to give people real quick. But then I wanted to get into the more personal side for me. Okay. There are very few high-profile individuals who have the courage and the moral fortitude to encourage people to do the right thing, which is the tagline of Dr. Laura's program. She's one of the few media personalities willing to talk about things like honor and character and right and wrong without worrying about the fact that doing so is considered blasphemous today. It is utterly refreshing, and it's the reason I have such respect for her. Dr. Laura has taken a lot of heat for being very straightforward in her approach to sensitive issues, but I also know, having listened to her for years, that most marriages and relationships could be saved if couples fired their therapist and listened to Dr. Laura instead. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Laura to the program. (laughs) Hello, Dr. Laura. Yay! (laughs) Well, that's how I feel. That's how I feel. And, um... I, I do believe that what you do on the radio is, I mean, it's really, it's hard for me, for other people maybe, because unless they listen to you every day, you know, you get into the person's head and you have three hours of call-ins every day. And here in St. Louis in the Midwest region, they re- replay it, I don't know if you know that, on Saturday and Sunday for three hours. So basically seven days a week, you could be in someone's head. And um, God, that sounds tiring. I think I need a nap. <laughs> um, I, I find it so, um, it's just so riveting to listen to all these people's um, problems, which I guess some people <laughs> wouldn't necessarily agree, but because it, it can get dicey. But what I've come up with is three overarching themes of what I think 
in your program comes up over and over again, or at least is what you stress, that a certain of overall life philosophy. And the first one, and of course you're known for getting to the point and telling it like it is, which is one of the reasons why I love the show because I'm the same way. I don't like to talk around things. I believe so strongly, and this is the first theme, that in order to solve a problem, any problem, professional or personal really, you have to be able to tell the truth. You have to get to the heart of it, even if it's hard to hear because if you don't do that you're literally never going to solve the problem you're just going to talk around it forever and so I wanted you to speak to that a little bit because that's what I get from your program when I listen to it all the time well most of the people who call me have listened for a while so they pretty much know what's going to happen and they make the choice to have the experience nonetheless there is no growth there is no movement in life without some uh, pullback I mean, it's scary. We want to go there. We want to know this. We want to feel better. We want, we want, we want, but there's scariness attached to it. So even when they call me knowing what's going to happen, I still have to work with defenses. In over four decades, I've learned pretty well how to do that relatively painlessly most of the time, not all the time. And what's wonderful is trying to explain to people that the real power you have to make life be a blessing and a joy for you and anybody associated with you comes from the truth. It doesn't come from hiding and squashing the feelings down, being strong, being scared, being protective, being anything, being vulnerable, being open, willing to face the dragons, uh, makes the dragons not be able to use flashes of fire as much good night. so when people call me about their marriages i want to know if they understand how they're screwing up mm, exactly oh and that's i could not agree more and of course that's that was the um, focus of my last book uh, where I was, was basically putting women's feet to the fire because I'm tr- and we're going to get to this later because this is one of the topics I want to talk about today um, in terms of what when you have a problem with a relationship the better thing to do is to look inside yourself rather than at the other person that's where you're going to find your your how, that's how you're going to solve the problem in the end okay so that's the first theme which I completely agree with and this, wait, wait, I hadn't yeah. quite finished the thought of explaining why that's true oh, sorry. And I think that's important to express It's true because if we are simply a victim, then we have no power to make anything better. But if we're willing, frighteningly willing, to look at what we should, could be doing, what we should not be doing, and face that, take responsibility for it, then we have something we can change. That is what gives us the power. So if you're a victim, you have no power. If you're a part perpetrator of your own life, that gives you the power to make a left or a right hand turn. Otherwise, it's hopeless. Completely agreed. And you actually just, uh, that was exact, the exact terms I was going to bring up on the second theme, which is the idea that your attitude towards something determines the outcome, not the circumstances. You are either a victim or a victor. And that's basically what you were just getting at there. And that puts the power, as you just said, in the person's hands if they know that just a simple shift, sometimes it's just the simplest and the smallest shift in the, your perspective can change the way you approach something if you're open and willing to do so. So you basically covered two and one there. And then the third one is feelings. You focus a lot on feelings. Actually, you covered two. I didn't really get to it. And I would like to take a little bit of an aside there. Uh, it's not just our attitude. I mean, there are things that can take us out. And it doesn't matter what your attitude is. You will be taken out of the pockets. So there are times you have to accept that whether you're optimistic, pessimistic, or in a coma, there are things that are going to happen over which you have no control, and your attitude will not necessarily alleviate the righteous pain that one feels when that happens. And so I try to help people understand that there are certain things in life that we have to endure, and that's not so much an attitude thing as a character thing, that we accept that there are things in life that are unfair, unreasonable, painful, hurtful, negative, mean, terrible, and etc. every other word I could fit in there. And sometimes 
it simply has to be, if I can be so ridiculous as to use the word simply, has to be endured. So I don't put it on people so much that they have to change their attitude so much as sometimes they have to accept the painful reality of life. Yeah, the good. And that's a, that's a great way to, that's a great addition to what I was saying. I have to close out just for a second here, and then we'll be right back after commercial break. Come on, baby. Drive me crazy. This is great, balls of fire. Hair Saloon. It's more than just a haircut. You walk in the door, tired, spent, looking a bit ragged. You're greeted by a warm welcome like you've been here before. A complimentary drink slides across the bar, quenching your thirst for comfort and convenience. The sound of clippers and conversation can be heard drowning out the noise of the world. You sit comfortably, surrounded in soft leather and smooth chrome. The smell of oak and clubman talc reconnects you to traditions your father and grandfather once knew. The soothing sounds of sharp metal trim away at your problems. Staying put in a comfortable barber chair, you lay back, resting your eyes as warm water and sweet mint soap washes away your worries. You recapture a few minutes to feel strong again, to look your best, and to get ready for what's next. And you're ready to repeat again a few weeks later. Hair Saloon, for men against the grain. Visit hairsaloon.com to find a location near you. That's hairsaloon.com. Welcome back to the Suzanne Venker Show, where you hear hard-hitting truths the culture hides. Find out more at SuzanneVenker.com. This program is brought to you by Hair Saloon for Men, for men against the grain. Visit hairsaloon.com. We are back today with Dr. Laura Schlesinger and talking about um, the various themes of uh, her life's work and her uh, radio program that always stand out to me as an avid listener. And we talked both about um, getting to the heart of the problems by telling the truth and then focusing on... um, looking inward at how you can change your circumstances based on the way you view something in terms of your attitude and also accepting some things that are outside of your control and learning how to endure it. And I think that word endure is is excellent and not used at all. I agree with you um, on that, Dr. Laura, Um, especially today, as you know, you well know, because we talk about this all the time on, um, um, with respect to the culture, you know, what, what do you call it? What are we calling it? Uh, 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 um, snowflakes. That's what I was getting at. Snowflakes. That snowflake culture makes it so that they don't know how to endure today, and that's why it's so important. Um, okay, yeah, and then the th- – sorry, go ahead. But no, that was, that's a very good point. Yeah. And I had a call yesterday, which I could throw in here if I sure. don't mind. I have a lot of mommies calling with their kids. Uh, I did one or two on the air, and suddenly there isn't a day I don't have one of those, and I just think it's adorable. So this mother calls in with her 13-year-old son who's in soccer camp, and he's really articulate and very nice-sounding. The mother is very nice-sounding, and there's all this nice, sweet stuff, right? So the complaint the kid has, uh, and I barely let the parents talk, the complaint the kid has is he's in a soccer camp, and the coach is very tough on him in particular and one other boy. And will come over and say, you did this wrong. Why did you do that? This is what you should be doing. And it's upsetting him. So I very gently said, well, was he right? Were you wrong? Yes. Did you learn? Yes. What did you learn? And he explained what he learned at that point. Give me another example. Was the coach wrong? No. Did you learn something? Yes. Are you changing how you play that particular situation? Yes. And I said, so the coach has made you a better player? Yes. (laughs) And then his mother types in, but he's not used to that tone. Ah, okay. And I ignored (laughs) her and went back to him and said, you're you're a male, you're going to be living in a male world. You go into the military, you go into combat, people are shooting at you, 
There's not going to be a mommy by the side going, oh, this is terribly upsetting. Now, I don't want you worried. Bullets are coming at you. If you could just put your head down, it would all be okay. I said, that's not what's going to happen. I said, and uh, he's expecting you to handle it like a man, which is to take the criticism, learn something from it, and get on with your day. So this is what I want you to do tomorrow. I want you to go up to the coach and say, Coach, thank you very much for helping me be a better player. I said, that's how a boy becomes a man. And so I spend an inordinate amount of time, and I mean that word, on the air trying to convince men to actually act like men. Uh, and, and I want to talk about that. That's, I'm so glad you brought that up. Are you, can, I, can we do that now? You can do anything you'd like. Okay. This is your program. Well, I didn't want to cut off You're your story. I, I, I want to make sure your story was finished. That was a great story, and it's, it leads in great, uh, perfectly to what I want to focus on. So it, you you do talk inordinately, and that's a good thing, in my opinion, about how men become, or boys, let's say, become men. And that also leads into my other topic I wanted to get into with respect to how modern women in particular don't understand men because they've taught They've been taught to be resentful of both men and marriage, and that's that's a bigger conversation. But they work together. Yeah. They work together because essentially, that's those are the two things you that come up a lot on your program is helping women understand the simplest um, concept that 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 most women in the history of time have grown up hearing from their mothers and grandmothers, which is how to love a man, how to motivate a man, how to be a good wife. These are things that are just taboo to talk about because women are supposed to not do that. They're supposed to focus their entire life on their career. And so they have no advice or guidance on the personal front. And so now they're flourishing professionally. That is true. But they're failing miserably on the home front. And that's where you and I come in and why we're so like-minded on this. So you want to speak to that a little bit? Well, with respect to the kids, I remind women daily and ferociously, as I can, muster up, that you put a kid in daycare, and that kid is unloved all day. Mm -hmm. Unloved all day. Does that sound reasonable to you? Don't give me the socialization. Don't give me that you should be able Mm -hmm. to do whatever you'd like. The kid is unloved all day. That's a bad mother. And I actually use the words bad mother. Yes, you do. In fact, it's almost a non-mother. Because if I have a job uh, in a grocery store and I don't show up, (laughs) I can't say that I'm a grocery store clerk. So if you're not mothering, all you did was give birth. Second, the marriage issue. I had one day, God, 15 years ago on the air, where it was just one woman after another calling to complain about her husband, dash marriage. Complain, 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 complain. And I was trying to turn one head around after another, showing them how they were not looking at it right and how simple this was to remedy and how they were not respecting and adoring and understanding the needs of the man. And finally, I slammed my hand down on the table like that. And as a joke, I said, I need to write the proper care and feeding of husbands. It was a joke. And I laughed. (laughs) Ha, ha. And went into commercial. And I sat there during commercial and I went, actually, I have to write that book. (laughs) And I figured nobody would read it. And in nine months, it went to a million sold. And it's still the biggest seller I ever had. And it's still selling like crazy in paperback. And women are giving it to their daughters and daughters-in-law and friends getting married. And I always say that should be, uh, you know, the little party you give a woman before she gets married. Yeah, That should be... Right. Yep. The, the, the gift or whatever, the takeaway, the, the take-home gift or whatever you call that. Yeah. Yes, because it's actually quite simple. Uh, men are uncomplicated. They're born of a woman, so their first experience with security, love, affection, attention is from a woman. They shift that to a wife. They're wanting the same things. They're wanting somebody to hug them, hold them, see them, tell them they're wonderful, and they'll do anything for you. And that's why I talk about a guy will swim through shark-infested water to bring you a lemonade. This is all you need to do. It's not complicated. So I've had women on the air. I've explained this to them when they were the brattiest-sounding women. Mm-hmm. They call or write to me within 48 hours going, I cannot believe this. I did this sweet thing for him, told him he was my man, my hero. And suddenly, he's doing the dishes, taking out the garbage. <laughs> he's, doing all, he's fixing pipes. Uh, and men are uncomplicated, but women have become so arrogantly narcissistic mm-hmm. and 
hateful mm-hmm. about being a woman. I mean, imagine being supportive of killing a baby in your body up to the point of birth. What have we done to women that a woman would think 20 seconds before birth you can kill no, the life I, in your body? I mean, it's just... How disrespectful uh, can we be about the miracle that takes place in our bodies? It's, it's just shocking. I mean, how far we've come, or haven't come, I should say, devolved in 40 years. And we know why that is, you and I both. And I want to talk about that when we come back, because what I haven't addressed specifically head-on yet, of course, that you and I have always addressed head-on is feminism and what how destructive that movement is and why it is. And I think the difference between you and me is that, correct me if I'm wrong, you at one time were a feminist or thought of yourself as one and then sort of had a come to Jesus party later or awakening later, uh, whereas I, I never did have that transitional th- thing happen. But at any rate, I'd love to talk about that when we come back in addition to what you and I have both experienced with the feminist media and what that looks like behind the scenes. Is that good? Good. Okay. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Be right back. Do you ever wonder what happened to courtship and find yourself longing to go out on a real date? Do you ask yourself why some marriages last and others fall apart? Is your marriage struggling despite your best efforts to keep it together? Women who win at love don't have a gift you don't have. What makes them unique is that they aren't at war with the men in their lives. Rather than take a competitive approach to relationships, as the culture teaches, they accept that men are men and that women are women. And that makes all the difference. Whether you're single and mapping out your life, or you're divorced or unhappily married, women who win at love will permanently alter the way you view men in marriage. You will learn the eight dating rules that lead to marriage, why super successful women struggle in love, what men want and what women want, hint, they're not the same, why love alone is not a reason to get married, how to avoid the green grass syndrome, and why acting like a man lands women in a ditch. Women Who Win at Love is an in-depth examination of modern dating and marriage and a wake-up call for women at every stage of life. So go to Amazon.com and type in Women Who Win at Love and get ready for your life to change. You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain Too much of love drives a man insane You broke my will, but what a thrill Goodness grace is great balls of fire I let you love for the party this morning you came along and you knew me, honey. I've changed my mind. This love is fine. And the direct is just great balls of fire. Kiss the baby. Welcome back to the Suzanne Venker Show, where you hear hard-hitting truths the culture hides. Find out more at SuzanneVenker.com. This program is brought to you by Hair Saloon for Men. For men against the grain. Visit HairSaloon.com. And we're talking today with Dr. Laura Schlesinger, my um, inaugural guest, which I'm thrilled to have um, thrilled to have her here. And we've been talking about all kinds of things related to men and women and sex and marriage and all of that. And I wanted to get into sort of the the meat of what's happened over the past few decades as to why we've devolved so much in terms of gender relations and marriage and family and the other topics we were mentioning. And that, of course, is feminism. And both Dr. Laura and I are are big fighters of feminism, I guess I'd put it, and um, have taken a lot of heat as a result. But um, I wanted to tell a little bit of of her story first about, um, about that. Dr. Laura? I'm sorry. You, you said you wanted to tell about my story, so oh, I was sorry. waiting to hear what you were going to tell. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, was, let's start with you. Let's hear <laughs> breath, dying to hear this. <laughs> let's start with you. You tell a little short quip, if you would, on uh, what your what your experiences have been or what your thoughts are on that subject. Well, I was in college in the '60s, and of course, it was very appealing when you're young to hear that you're special, you're spectacular, and you're the most important thing on the face of the earth. And nothing else and nobody else matters. When you're a very young person, that's appealing because you're immature. And the whole point of maturity is to change that perspective because when babies are born and they're suckling at their mother's breast, they actually believe that the breast is connected to them, that it's theirs, they own it. So as a child develops, the child sees that the mother is a separate person. Well, as the child develops into adulthood, they start seeing that there are other people in the world to whom they owe something. 
that they are not the center of the universe. Well, feminism stops that dead. So right. that step of we owe other people something and that we are made to be more and special by virtue of what we do for others, not what we constantly do for ourselves. Feminism stopped that. So feminism started out as equal pay for equal work, and then it morphed into something terrible, mm -hmm. which was retarded development. Mm -hmm. And so it's all about us. And if they were really about uh, elevating women who achieve and using them as inspiration and role models, I would have been on the cover of Ms. Magazine 52 times instead of getting raspberries. So uh, they have attacked me, and I don't. Yeah, activist yeah. groups are, are like fleas at my ankles. I don't really worry about them a lot. Right, but that, so what I focus more on is what I call the feminist media, because of course they're saturated in that in that domain. And if you're if you're up against, if you need the media in any way, or if you're using it to sell something, and your message does not comport with what they believe, obviously you're going to have the we uh, who, whoever does it is going to be on the opposite side of the fence and going to have a harder time of it. Well, and, the fortunate uh, part about this, with respect to my life and career and work, is I don't need anybody in the media anymore. No, I'm you on don't. Serious XM, right. Them, right. And they believe in free speech, and they have protected everybody. And we have Facebook and Instagram right. and podcasts. Yep. We have a million ways, as our president says, to get directly to the people. I know it's been. I don't have to, Go ahead. Sorry. I don't have. To, I don't have to worry about slogging through. I don't do TV anymore. I mean, I just sat across from too many self-serving idiots uh, who just wanted to hit their bones by trying to embarrass me. Mm -hmm. and to me, they embarrass themselves, and that's boring. Compl and uh, Although I do miss getting dressed up as often as I used to. <laughs> I don't. That's my least favorite part. I actually can't stand television, and I have to do it on occasion, you know, if it if it presents itself. But I couldn't agree more. And 20 years ago, when I was very green, I, you know, it was trial by fire, and I, I learned that the hard way. And you're so right. In the last, well, certainly 10 years, especially, the, the alternative media has exploded. So now it's, like, not even on my radar, and I don't even care, which is great. But I do like to still point out when the – what – what I want to do mostly is to point out to regular everyday people who are absorbing this wh why and how the narratives that they're getting are are not only terribly biased, but they're not in their best interests. So if you, unless you reject it, unless you're an independent thinker and specifically reject the culture, you will fail, in my opinion, in life and love because everything you're getting from the culture is trash, basically. So you have to find alternative ways of getting your information, and thank God you know, people can do that today in a way that they, that they couldn't before. So that's great. And I do love the, the, and I want to point out to my listeners, so Dr. Laura can be heard, as she said, on Sirius XM Radio today. That's Channel 111, for those of you who have it. And she used to be on Terrestrial Radio once upon a time. Then people, myself included, sort of lost track of her. And then she got back on via Sirius, which um, is a completely different animal and has been really great. So that's where you can find her if you're looking well, for was, her. There was not a day that I was off the air. I was on a Friday on Terrestrial, Monday on Sirius XM. I didn't miss a beat. Got it. Got it. Well, I, I lost track of so you. I, I wish I had done this 10 years earlier. Yeah, I uh, no, I've heard you say it. Okay. okay, we're going to come back in one minute. minute. i got to take a quick commercial break. So kind. You're a man that respects quality over quantity. You value relationships that can stand the test of time. You enjoy convenience without sacrificing comfort. At Hair Saloon for Men, we get it. We are restoring the time-honored tradition of delivering a haircut experience men across all generations can depend on. Because sometimes the man everyone depends on needs a place of his own to depend on. The experience goes well beyond the haircut. With every perfect haircut service, you receive a complimentary beverage, a relaxing shampoo, a hot towel and mint for the perfect finish, and remember to take advantage of the complimentary shoe shines. While today's world is filled with numerous clip joints and fancy salons, Hair Saloon is building something better something different book appointments online 24 7 and walk-ins are always welcome here's some for men against the grain 
Visit hairsaloon.com to find a saloon in your neighborhood or for franchising opportunities. That's hairsaloon.com. Welcome back to the Suzanne Venker Show, where you hear hard-hitting truths the culture hides. Find out more at SuzanneVenker.com. This program is brought to you by Hair Saloon for Men, for men against the grain. Visit HairSaloon.com. We're back today talking with Dr. Laura Schlesinger, um, commonly known as Dr. Laura. And many of you um, who are aware of her can hopefully catch her on Sirius XM Channel 111, I think on your car radio. Is there, are there other places to get it? Tell us about where else you hear it, because I only hear it on the car radio. There are a million ways to get it. You just have to go to DrLaura.com and figure okay. it out. But okay, okay. I think, I think more people should live in their cars during the time that I'm on the air. <laughs> well, I happen to. I happen to, which is how I <laughs> am able to catch you almost every day. That's just the, the hours that I'm in the car. Um, okay, so there's another topic. We talked about women not understanding men and we started off talking about that, and I wanted to talk about something else that comes up a lot, I think. Um, either individuals or couples who come on, come on and talk about some sort of gender role reversal where either the woman's the breadwinner, the dad's at home, or you know the wife's at the breadwinner, the husband's at home, or the wife makes more than the husband, or just some sort of gender role reversal situation that, of course, then upsets the dynamic in the relationship, and they're completely confused as to why that would be. And I've heard it both in individuals, or like one person you had that called in, she had three or four marriages, and in each case, she was the dominant partner, and she didn't put that link together at all, and then you had to sort of spell it out for her. So do you want to speak to that? Well, statistically speaking, women want to be carried over mud puddles. And you can change the culture, you can do all of those things to say it's new era, but you can't change psychobiology. We want men to be bigger, stronger, smarter, although in, you're in my case, that would be tough for you. <laughs> smarter and, <laughs> and be able to support the family. Uh, it does work sometimes, but generally speaking, statistically, those marriages don't succeed as well. They don't, and it's one of the things that I'm um, sort of heavy into now. My new book that's coming out in October has a whole uh, chapter that says that's called Beware of Being the Breadwinner. Um, and the reason why I'm so concerned about it now, of course, is that you know that we have women, you know, very successful now, certainly on college campuses, they're outnumbering men, and you have men falling behind. And this is a dynamic that's very topical, very real, and I think is just going to continue down this path. And if people don't get the understanding that this is not going to work well or bode well for marriage, then what then? You know, then men and women aren't getting together, families aren't being created, and it's kind of a kind of a giant mess. So I'm in the middle of really honed in on that particular dynamic. So when those people call in and have you know have that happen and you talk to them, I um, perk up because of that. Um, yeah, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. Um, okay, and then another unpopular topic, uh, but very obvious to people like you and me, is what you call shacking up. Um, some people, I guess, in the culture call it cohabitation and make it very formal. And, of course, it is. it has skyrocketed, skyrocketed, as we know. But can you lay out for people why this very obvious – well, I think there are a couple different ways of approaching it. But I like the um, – I'm not sure what other people are told specifically by their parents. I know what the culture tells them. But can you just explain in very simple terms why it's a no-win situation and why it's, as you always put, point out, an insult to even have a guy ask you to move in with him as opposed to marrying him? Well, it's a win situation for the man. He has right, right, yes. Yeah. Companionship. He has access to sex. He has access to all the nurturing things that happen in the home. Um, and he does not have to make any kind of commitment and lay down his life for her. Uh, women haven't changed in wanting a man to lay down his life for her. But where women are become less and less secure in that because their parents screwed up their marriages, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, probably, mm -hmm. in the plural, and they don't feel that hopeful. And they're kind of doing whatever they can to feel wanted. So 
most of the women who shack up are doing so out of desperation and fear and a desperate need. And one of the, you know, you can go down the list of things. There's more sexual abuse in that case. Uh, kids out of wedlock don't mean that the marriage is going to stay together. It's more likely going to fall apart uh, if they do get married. So all the statistics for mental illness, for abuse, for loss are higher. They're not lower. So to say that we're practicing and we'll make marriage better is not true because the attitude that goes into not making a commitment right, and then exactly. living up to it uh-huh. is very different. And I, I finally have gotten to the point where I say to women, do you want to be a woman or a lady? Yeah, I like that. That's very good. Yep. Would a lady do this? Yes. Would a lady allow mm-hmm. her some guy to treat her like an unpaid whore? And every time you and do that, there's silence. <laughs> got paid. Yeah. I respect whores that got paid. I don't respect women who shack up. I respect whores who get paid more. Because at least it's an intelligent business deal. This <laughs> is sacrificing right. your dignity yeah. on a hope and a prayer. It's pathetic. It it's is pathetic, sad. and it's also during the years when you're losing your uh, ability to have children. So they get involved well, in all they these... Often, uh, they often do this, dragging along kids from prior marriages well, that too. and what have you. So, that too. Uh, I tell them you're hurting your kids, and is that important to you? That you're taking away their hope that they can actually have a committed, sacred, safe, consistent home in their futures. You're taking that away from them just so that you have some guy in the house. Is that really... Is that really how you want to see yourself? Great. Okay. And then we're going to close out for just a minute. And when we come back, we have just a few minutes left. And I want to ask you about um, what I think might be a new book coming out this year that's a sort of a compilation of, of work. Is that true? Yes. Okay. We'll come Thank back you. in just one minute. Okay. Okay. Welcome back to The Suzanne Venker Show, where you hear hard-hitting truths the culture hides. Find out more at SuzanneVenker.com. This program is brought to you by Hair Saloon for Men. For men against the grain, visit HairSaloon.com. And we are back with Dr. Laura Schlesinger, and we just have a few minutes left, and I wanted to ask her about um, a new book that I think she has coming out this year. Well, thank you for mentioning it. I wasn't going to, but... (laughs) Well, I thought I heard you say that on your program last week. For 15 years, I've been doing uh, monthly columns for Newsmax magazine. Uh, Then they are online, so the columns are online. And uh, so they suggested that we make a, that's a lot of columns. So they take a smattering of this, that, and the other thing and different topics and put it together with my commentary in between, sort of annotation, and uh, put it out as a book called uh, Live and Love. Live and love? Is that what you said? Yes. Live and love. Okay. Oh, that's it. That's the end. Okay. Uh, it'll be out in November. Got it. I, I, I'm not good on self-promotion. That's Well, I wanted to mention that because you did say something last week, and I was curious, actually, myself. So, good. Um, can I yeah. can I end the wrap us up with one tiny little point sure. that I would really like your audience to hear here because I use it a lot? In dealing with all the marriages that I do and trying to help people stay together, my primary motivation is to protect the children. Mm -hmm. Adults can screw up their lives and I don't lose sleep. But if that somehow impacts children negatively, I'm not a happy person. And so I've been dealing with this for, you know, 40-something years. And I got an email from a gay man who said, I can't understand why everybody is complaining about gay marriage when straight marriages have such a high (laughs) divorce rate. And he said, so I have, for the straight people out there, I have a suggestion for you that will make every marriage perfect. So I read this on air, and I've used this a thousand times. Okay? Choose wisely. Treat kindly. It can't be more simple than that. So when I talk to people, well, didn't you know he or she was doing this? Yeah, but okay, then you didn't choose wisely. So after that, all bets are off. So choose wisely. Treat kindly. And you'll die with the memory of a wonderful marriage and family at an old age, hopefully. I thank you for um, for for bringing that up because I I do hear you say that very often on the air, and I actually think about it often when 
you're not on the air, just walking around my house. Because it really does come down to that in the end, that if you look at people's issues, either they didn't choose well to begin with, so they've got a character problem. And by the way, you defined character last week in in an exceptional way, too, which I wrote down. You said, because that can be hard, you know, like to describe what character means. And you said it's the quality of their soul coming out in their behavior. And character is such a significant uh, component to who we are and to how we function, but we don't talk about things like that, which is why what makes you you, because you'll talk about things like honor and character that you used to hear about very often, particularly in Hollywood films, but those things have gone by the wayside. So at any rate, that um, if you chose well to begin with, you're, 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 the rest is easy because it's just about how you're behaving and how you treat the person. And if you treat the person well, but the person you married didn't have the character, then you kind of have a problem. So you're right. It does come down to that, and that's a great way of sort of surmising the whole the whole ball game. Okay, well, I have to say thank you very much for coming on this inaugural program and taking time out of your busy schedule for me. I so appreciate it. I couldn't think of a better person to have on for this um, first segment. And I um, thank you very much and encourage everybody to go to Sirius XM Channel 111. You can catch Dr. Laura on, at least around here, every day from... In the afternoon, I think it's twelve to f- one to five here in this area, um, and again, it's repeated on the weekends, so you can't really miss it. It's kind of hard to miss. So, my guest today was Dr. Laura Schlesinger, otherwise known as Dr. Laura. You can find out more about her at drlaura.com. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and please take one minute to give us your review. And if you have a comment or question, you can email Suzanne at the Suzanne Show.com. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Do you ever wonder what happened to courtship and find yourself longing to go out on a real date? Do you ask yourself why some marriages last and others fall apart? Is your marriage struggling despite your best efforts to keep it together? Women who win at love don't have a gift you don't have. What makes them unique is that they aren't at war with the men in their lives. Rather than take a competitive approach to relationships, as the culture teaches, they accept that men are men and that women are women. And that makes all the difference. Whether you're single and mapping out your life, or you're divorced or unhappily married, women who win at love will permanently alter the way you view men in marriage. You will learn the eight dating rules that lead to marriage, why super successful women struggle in love, what men want and what women want, hint, they're not the same, why love alone is not a reason to get married, how to avoid the green grass syndrome, and why acting like a man lands women in a ditch. Women Who Win at Love is an in-depth examination of modern dating and marriage and a wake-up call for women at every stage of life. So go to Amazon.com and type in Women Who Win at Love and get ready for your life to change.